Hey guys, welcome back. Working on a 1993 Infinity J20. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't work on older stuff, but when we're diagnosing vehicles, especially drivability concerns, a lot of the vehicles operate the same. I mean, yeah, this isn't direct injection, so it's gonna operate the same as a lot of the vehicles up until 2005. Um, we just may not be able to get as much information out of the scan tool, and we may have to actually do pinpoint testing. Um, customer has been to several of the shops. She left a note. Uh, her complaint is that it runs kind of sluggish. She doesn't think she has a compression problem. It runs poorly, it doesn't smoke. She can get it out on the highway, do 65, no problem, no backfiring, etc. She's had new spark plugs, vacuum lines fixed recently within the last four months. Um, several of the shops have recommended fuel injectors, mass airflow sensor, idle control motor, and vacuum modulator. But they couldn't tell her why they were recommending those things. They were basically guessing. Um, she heard that we do good diagnostic work, so she brought it to us. Um, the engine has been replaced. Oh no, the whole car only has 101,000 miles. So low mileage car, Infinity. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with this engine, but I do have quite a bit of experience with older Nissans. Um, we do work on quite a few of them because they don't really rust out in Colorado. They're still up on the road. I went and drove it. It didn't lack power at all. It has a slightly rough idle, but you know, take it on the road and you punch it. It runs good all the way through the power band. Um, I stopped about 6,000 RPM just because I don't know if it has a new timing belt or anything like that. I didn't want to bring it all the way to redline. That tells me that the fuel pump is putting out probably enough volume. The mass airflow is probably working because I didn't feel a lack of power. The exhaust probably isn't plugged. Um, now we could have slightly low efficiency on the mass airflow causing a slight lean condition. We could have slightly low fuel pressure. We could have a little bit of a high ethanol content causing a slight lean mi mixture. We could have a slight restriction in the cats, but none of those things are enough to tell me that I, I have a noticeable power loss here. Now, after warming up, it is idling a little bit rougher. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna scan it. Um, snap on Triton D10. I know this one just came out, but yes, it still works on OBD1 vehicles. Um, the cord is different. There's a small adapter harness that goes on the end of the OBD2 cord that lets you plug in all of your OBD1 connectors. Um, our shop has the whole assortment. We have been running Snap-on tools for years and years, so that is all readily available. Nissan surprisingly has pretty good data even on the old vehicles. Um, as long as it has the Nissan 2 connector, which is like, I think it's a 14 or 13, the 14 or 12 pin connector, something like that. But you can normally get pretty good information. So we're gonna scan it, we're gonna see what codes we have, um, and that's gonna lead us, hopefully, if we have codes, that'll lead us in a direction. If not, we may have to try and find out which cylinder is causing the rough idle. We may have a spark plug or a coil, even though they've just been you know, installed, the spark plugs have, we still have a could have a coil that's bad. Um, we could have a vacuum leak causing a lean running condition. We may have injector issues, which is very, very common on Nissans. So let's go ahead and scan it. Okay, I'm all connected. Let's go engine, automatic. That's the connector we need. And I'm hoping this will give us at least codes, if not good data. Codes only. Code 51 injector open circuit. Now these vehicles didn't really tell you which injector. Uh, let's go into the intelligent diag. Most common is replace fuel injectors. Uh, there's a few other things, replace gaskets, plenum gaskets. Let's check service bulletins, make sure. Um, injector cleaner usage, control module identification, no start stuff. So I don't really see anything that's gonna tell me, you know, just about a rough idle or low power. So those probably don't apply. Um, since I have an injector code, let's go to the guided component test meter and let's check the fuel injectors. Okay, let's go to component information. 
Okay, it tells us where our pinout is. There are some connectors under the hood. Nissan normally has all of those running through uh, one of those connectors, all the injectors and the coils. So we can, actually it's showing two connectors here. So a gray connector and a brown connector. So it looks like all of our control circuits are in the gray connector. Our power is in the brown connector. We're gonna wanna get on this power for our amp clamp. And then if we need to sync it up with the cylinder, then we're gonna go to the gray connector to back probe our number one injector. So I wanna do a signature test, um, actually a current ramp test. And what I'll probably do is I'll look at all of the current ramps for all the injectors, and then we will add a sync channel and we'll look at the signature of that individual channel. So I'm gonna get some stuff set up under the hood and I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, under the hood, towards the back of the intake, I see the gray and brown connector. I wanna run an amp clamp on there. Um, so I'm gonna peel back some of the tape so I can get the amp clamp around there. Yeah, we could just do voltage drop and back probe our power wire, um, but I get a lot better image using an amp clamp. Um, I don't really want to run you know, eight jumper wires across here. So I'm just gonna peel back the, uh, the tape. Okay, so I have the amp clamp around what I think is a power wire. I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's go ahead and get back to our current ramp test screen. Okay, we'll go full screen here and we'll start up the vehicle and see what we get. And then if we have a signal where we're getting all six injectors, then we'll add a sync channel. Okay, I'm seeing some fluctuations right now. We're not looking at all the injectors at once. Um, we're just looking at, you know, we have a trigger and a short time base. But if I stop this capture and I zoom out, we're gonna notice the difference in height here. Um, that's why it was jumping around because we have different amplitudes or different amperages of those injectors. There we go. So I, I just zoomed in again after zooming all the way out and we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we have one that's dead, down. So we only have one injector with lower amperage, um, which is a higher impedance or higher resistance, which is really common on these Nissan fuel injectors. But we don't know which one that is, so we need to add a second channel. Let me go back to record here. I'm gonna turn on my channel two. Just gonna tap that there. We're gonna be on the uh, test lead volts DC. I don't think we need 400. We'll just step it down to 200 volts. Um, these injectors probably won't be over 100 volts. And we will have to get a uh, another lead connected to here and we'll back probe cylinder number one injector. Now I do want to go back and I want to look at the pin out. So injector number one is going to be pin number four and that's the information I need to know so I can create my sync channel. Okay, so I'm hooked on cylinder number one. Now we can see all kinds of stuff jumping around here. I'm gonna change my trigger to cylinder number one and that's gonna line it up. See how it's not jumping around anymore? That's because we're not looking at the pattern for all six injectors. We're only looking at cylinder number one injector, but it's still recording the other information. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. We're gonna zoom out. Once it zooms all the way out, I'm gonna zoom back in. I think I picked 32 last time, which was a pretty good view. And then we need to find our sink. Okay, our sink is right here. Now, the other thing I should have looked at is our firing order. Um, now this might be as simple as one, two, three, four, five, six, because a lot of V6s are, but I'm gonna double check and verify. Yes, the firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that tells me if this is number one, that's gonna be number six. Number six injector has high resistance. Now we should probably zoom in on each one of these injectors just to verify that the uh, signal looks appropriate. Make sure we have pintle movement and all that. Yeah, it was kind of a weird. 
So there's our number one. So that one looks a little strange, but um, might be normal for this vehicle. Number two looks the same. That could just be the way I'm zoomed in. Number three is the same. We see a pinto hump in the middle of that waveform. Now this one has a really, really late pinto hump. Did you notice that? And here we are for number six. We do have pinto movement. Let me zoom in all the way on this one. I'll turn off our cursors. We'll zoom in all the way. So right here, this dip, we can see the pinto is opening but it's opening way late because the magnetic field is really weak. The resistance is too high for it to generate a strong magnetic field. Um, if we put this cursor back at the beginning, come over here. So it took 2.1 milliseconds for that pentel to open, but then it shut off right here. So that cylinder is gonna be running very, very lean. We're gonna be getting very minimal fuel into that cylinder. So it needs at least number six. Number three looks kind of iffy, like the pentel is sticking a little bit. Honestly, I'm gonna recommend all six and we'll go from there. Okay, that's gonna be it for this one. Um, like I said, even though it's an older car with our modern scan tools, at least with the Snap-on, I have the capability of scanning it, which gave me a diagnostic direction. Now, not every vehicle is gonna give you that direction, but just knowing the vehicle, I probably would have checked the fuel injectors next anyways, because it is a coil on plug system. It's a little more difficult to find out which cylinder has the miss. If it was a distributor based system, yeah, I would jump to ignition, look at those waveforms because I can compare all of those waveforms on one screen very easily by connecting to the coil wire. So since this one had the coil on plug, I'm glad that we had the code, but you know, a few tests. I have less than 30 minutes in this vehicle, even with talking to you guys. And we have confirmed that we have two faulty injectors. One has high resistance, one has a sticking um, pencil, or it's a delayed movement of that pencil. And the intake manifold is gonna have to come off so we can replace those injectors. Hopefully the customer wants to do it. If not, if she doesn't believe us, we do have the evidence to show her what is going on. And she may choose to uh, not fix it and take it somewhere else, but hopefully she decides to fix it because it is a low mileage vehicle. It has lots of life left in it. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.